Welcome to the Get in the Fight podcast. My name is Nate Whitson, and I'm the founder of Get in the Fight Ministries and our exclusive online fight club for Christian men. Everything we do here is dedicated to helping Christian men become the men that God meant for them to be. So if you're looking for helpful content and conversations that can help you to grow and become the man that God made you to be, then you're in the right place. But before we get started, please do me a huge favor and be sure to subscribe, click the like button, and then leave us a five-star review. Doing that helps us to reach more men who are looking for content just like this. Also, if you'd like to learn more about our mission and how to get involved or how to join the Fight Club, then head on over to getinthefight.club. That's getinthefight.club and learn more today. But without further ado, it's time to get in the fight. So let's go. Leadership is difficult, but not complicated. To do it right doesn't require a sophisticated chart, a calculus formula, or a complex algorithm, but it does require some guidance. So how do we make the difficult nature of leadership simple? Well, for thousands of years, militaries have relied on mottos, creeds, parables, and stories to inspire, to motivate, and to guide leaders and followers alike. These sayings serve to reinforce certain behaviors. They also provide a memory prompt, a Pavlovian response, and an inspirational surge that helps direct individual actions in the midst of uncertainty. Serving in the military, I relied heavily on these sayings to guide my actions. Whenever I had a difficult decision to make, I would ask myself, can you stand before the long green table? Since World War II, the conference tables used in military boardrooms had been constructed of long, narrow pieces of furniture covered in green felt. Whenever a formal proceeding took place that required multiple officers to adjudicate an issue, the officers would gather around the table. The point of the saying was simple. If you couldn't make a good case to the officers sitting around the long green table, then you should reconsider your actions. Every time I was about to make an important decision, I asked myself, can I stand before the long green table and be satisfied that I took all the right actions? It is one of the most fundamental questions a leader must ask themselves, and the old saying helped me to remember what steps to take. That there is a reading from a new book out called The Wisdom of the Bullfrog, by Admiral William H. McRaven, and my name is Nate Whitson, and we are uh, here with Get In The Fight Ministries. If you're new, we are talking about things like leadership and today dealing with problems as a man and how to navigate through those things and find solutions quicker and, and ultimately make better decisions. But the end game really in that for a man is that we are here to try to become the men that God meant for us to be. And so we're having conversations like this, leadership lessons and conversations from amazing men like Admiral McRaven. We're we're looking at things along this context right now of the idea of our lives are really decisions accumulated over time. We, We make decisions, we take action or we don't take action. And the decision to not move leads us in a certain direction. We all are an accumulation of daily decisions that have led us exactly to where we're at today. And so as Christian men, what we're trying to do is redeem the time that we have. We don't know if we have days or weeks or years left, but what we want to do is find our way to heaven, having been able to stand before the Lord and and just having maximized to the best of our ability the time that we have here on earth. We want to live better lives and bigger lives and really figure out how can we get closer to this idea of being the man that God meant for us to be. This is one of the core things that we think about here and talk about a lot at Get In The Fight Ministries is that when you were born, God brought you here on purpose, for a purpose, for a mission, and you are needed in that fight. A lot of our conversations are really kind of geared around this idea that for many Christian men, we kind of get to this place where we just we become apathetic to things. We become very passive to this mission, very passive to this fight, and we just kind of coast. I don't know if you feel that way as you're listening to this today, but I have certainly felt that way at times, and I really have to fight and resist that. I really have to figure out how to maximize the skills and talents and treasures and all those things that God has given to me, all those things that are uniquely me so that he can someday say, well done, Nate, you did a great job. You know, we know it will be imperfect, but I I want to hear well done. And and I want to uh, be the man 
that God meant for me to be. And I want that for you, that you would be that man too. And so today we're, we're taking on, again, just kind of a continuation of this idea of making better decisions. And one of the things that stood out to me in Admiral McCraven's book is that idea that we aren't necessarily approaching this from a leadership standpoint in today's podcast, but let's be honest, if you're a man, if you have a family, you're a leader, period. <laughs> so we could just substitute that and turn this into a leadership conversation, and it certainly is. But really, it's just about being a man and leading yourself well and leading others well. And, and we can't do that if we don't learn to handle problems better, if we don't make better decisions on the day-to-day -day decisions that we have to make. Here's one of the, the premises of this conversation today. It seems like we deal with problems and we confront them, but we look at a lot of the problems that we face as if they're too complex to solve. It's kind of like we see these problems in front of us. We've got to make a decision and we end up feeling stuck and unsure of what to do. We don't know what actions to take because it feels like the answer is either elusive or it's too big to solve. And what I want to propose to you today is that there may be times that that is true, that the problem requires a solution that is just very heavy and very big. But my premise to you is that most of the time it's not true. What I think is true is that a lot of times we actually know exactly what we should do. We just don't act like a man and get done what needs to be done. There's a book uh, by a guy named Karl von Clausewitz. I don't know if that's true, but that's how I would say it. Karl von Clausewitz. It's called On War. And he says in there, everything in war is simple, but the simple things are difficult. That's kind of the idea here when it comes to dealing with problems as a man. We have to understand that it's not as complex as we make it out to be. The reality is that it's pretty simple to solve the problem most of the time. But those simple things are really just difficult to do, and it's why we struggle. So think about this. I just want to kind of walk through some examples of this that, that I was thinking that I think could really help us to maybe demystify the complexity of uh, solving a problem that's in front of you. So think about this. Imagine that we're having a conversation and somebody says to us, man, I'm just like struggling financially. Like we are just, everything's tight. It's, you know, I feel the pressure. We just feel stuck. Well, when I hear that many times and I start to get invited in, first of all, to that conversation, we start to look at the reality of somebody's financial life. One of the things that we find out is that money in a lot of ways is very simple. Money comes in and money goes out. So what we have to simply do is look at the reality in front of us and say, how much money is coming into your hands every single month? Where is it going? And so we start with that simple idea of let's just track the money and let's see where it goes. And what we find out is that the reason that many people are actually struggling financially is because they don't have clarity about where the money's at or they're, they're not honest about the fact that they're spending money they don't have or they shouldn't be spending money on certain things. Like, for example, Imagine if somebody's like, man, we are just stuck and we don't know what to do. We just, I don't know what to do. I just, I don't, I don't think there's a solution here. And then we find out that they're, you know, paying for $200 a month for cable and internet and, you know, TV. And you say, well, let, you know, you could get rid of that. Right. And they're like, wow, we can't really do that because of the kids. And because that's our only source of entertainment or this and that. Right. So they're like, okay maybe that's not it. And then you look at their spending habits on entertainment or apps or whatever the thing might be. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it is. The reality is the solution in a lot of those cases, and again, you're listening to this going like, that's not my story. Cool. I'm not pointing fingers or thinking of anybody in particular. What I'm saying is that if we're honest about this particular problem that we're dealing with, a lot of times the solution isn't complex. It's very simple. You need to stop spending money that you don't have on stuff that you can't afford. You might have to sell a vehicle. You might have to get rid of that house. You might have to do some really hard things. But the answer itself, and this is my point, isn't complex. It's that it's very difficult to do those things. Do you see what I'm saying? 
the problems that we confront on a day-to-day basis, we make it seem like they're these big, huge mountains that can't be moved. And the reality is it's really quite simple to solve it. It's just very difficult. It takes a lot of courage and manhood to be honest about that and, and to you know change course or correct that behavior. If somebody says to us another problem and they say, gosh, I just, I can't stop looking you know, at pornography or, you know, images and things that I shouldn't be looking at. And I just, I can't get past it. Well, if I talk to that guy and I say, you know, where are you most likely to, you know, see that stuff at? And he's like, well, you know, most of the time I can do it right on my phone. I say, okay, where is your phone? And he grabs it from his back pocket and he says, it's right here. He says, cool, let me see that. And he goes like, and I just say to him, why, why do you have this on you? And he's like, well, because I got to use it for work and I got to use it to keep in touch with everybody. And he goes through all these things, right? Well, we kind of know where we're going here with this now because the the solution isn't difficult at all, is it? In fact, there's a pastor that I follow that talks a lot on these issues out of Texas, and he just says anytime somebody tells him that they're struggling with pornography and he asks for their phone, he just says, well, you're not serious about changing this yet because the solution is you get a flip phone. And if you're not willing to do that, then you're not really hurting you're just wanting to seem sorry but you're not really ready to change and you know that sounds kind of harsh but the reality is just like with the money conversation it's like the answer is simple it's just difficult to do it's difficult for a guy to say like i can't have you know a phone or every device i have has to have accountability software on it why doesn't that happen well the solution is there it's just difficult to do that what if somebody's like, you know, my wife and I, we're, we have a problem where we just, we fight and we argue and we just, we're in conflict all the time and we just don't know what to do. That's a problem that a guy might have. So maybe you're listening, that's a problem that you have. Well, when you look at that, you just think, gosh, I, I don't know. We just, it, round and round it goes, I don't know where to go from here. The reality is the solution could be that you, as the husband, take ownership of that relationship and say, this is on me. I'm going to fix this. Right. And again, not, not outside of Christ. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying it starts with you in a relationship saying, I'm going to give a hundred percent. I'm not going to wait till you say you're sorry. I'm going to be the one to do that. I'm going to be the one to apologize first. I'm going to be the one to address the communication issue. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get this fixed. The solution isn't complex. It's just difficult to do. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the conversation so far. And if you are, please do us a huge favor and be sure to subscribe, click the like button, and then leave us a five-star review. It only takes a few seconds to do this, but it makes a huge difference for us. And it helps us to reach more men who are looking for content just like this. Thanks so much for listening and helping us out. Now back to the show. And so on and on, what we see is that we have made the problem look like or feel like it's insurmountable. And the reality is, like we're saying over and over, is that it just takes a lot of courage. One of the things that we pray for in our fight club is we pray through, and I'm going to give the the four principles to you here in just a second, actually. But one of the, the things that we pray through at the end of those four principles is a verse we pray through every day. It's 1 Corinthians 16. 13 and 14, and it says, be alert, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong, do everything in love. And I love that, that verse. I love praying through that verse. And one of the things that it teaches us to do is to act like men. Well, most of the translations actually talk about courage, be men of courage or have courage, act with courage. And in the, the translation that I use, it says, act like men, which I like for obvious reasons. <laughs> but the point of the matter is acting like a man is to act with courage, to be strong. And when we're looking at dealing with problems today, we're realizing that it's our response to the problem that leads us to the destinations we arrive at. Again, you are exactly where you're at as in as a result of daily decisions and behaviors. You're exactly where you're at relationally. You're exactly where you're at physically, mentally, emotionally, all of these things because of your behaviors. And until we own that, and until we demystify the idea that these problems are so big that they're unsolvable, 
you know, until we get rid of that and we just take ownership over our life, we're going to stay stuck there. And it takes acting like a man, being strong and doing everything in love, being alert to what the devil's doing. All of those things in that verse, 1 Corinthians 16, 13 and 14, you absolutely should memorize that one and take it to heart. That's really what we're dealing with today. Addressing problems with courage to do the right thing. In his book, uh, Admiral McRaven says that as difficult as leadership is, it's not complicated. Again, just kind of reiterating that fact that let's take the complication part of it out. Let's dispel that idea that it's too difficult or complex to understand. I mean, there might be times that that's true, right, where the, the solution is complex, but most of the time it's not. And so what we need is a tool or tools that can help us, that we can take with us wherever we go that could help us. I mean, wouldn't you love to have a tool that you could take with you wherever you go that could help you to make better decisions, that could help you to know how to respond or act in the moment? Well, the reality is we have that. We have that through something that people have used for all of time, and that is mottos and sayings and creeds you know, or mantras, things like that. In fact, I wrote this down, but from his book, Admiral McRaven gives a few from the military that I thought were pretty great. He says that the army rangers use a, a phrase where they say sua sponte, and I don't exactly know the, the history or the, the roots of that, but what it means is of your own accord, meaning that you decide, <laughs> that you're in charge of you, and you get to decide how you're going to respond to this, sua sponte. British Special Air Service uses a motto that says, who dares wins. And the Navy SEALs mantra is the only easy day was yesterday. In each of those communities, they have those sayings, those phrases. I mean, Admiral McRaven in that opening conversation talked about the long green table. And again, it gives a story. It gives a context that helps them to make decisions. And this is really what we need in our lives too. We need mottos or creeds or sayings that are memorable and portable, they're repeatable, and there's something that we can put deep into our, our heart and our mind so that when we are having to uh, confront a problem and make a decision that we can more easily pull on these sayings to give us inspiration and give us motivation and give us direction forward. That's really what those sayings do, and that's what we're looking for. So I want to transition now and just kind of share with you the four principles that we use at Get in the Fight Ministries, and we pray through this every single day. We call this the Fight Club Prayer, and every day we are asking men in our community to pray through these four things, and these are four principles, four ideas that are all backed by four different sayings, just like we've been looking at here, that can help us to deal with problems better and inspire us with what we should do in response to the problem. So I'm going to read these to you and then kind of give some quick commentary. And again, I, I would challenge you if you're uh, able to and you want to, you can write these down. You actually can get a free copy of this if you go to getinthefight.club and you scroll down for a free resource. All you've got to do is enter your name and email. You can download this and it gives you a ton more detail in these four principles. But it's right there on the website and you can get it for free today and, and catch up with these. Or you can just write these down. But here's the first one. Every day we pray that God would help make us men of honor. And so the first phrase is, I am a man of honor. And here's the saying, I live with integrity in my private and public life, and I keep the commitments that I've made to God and others. So imagine that you are faced with the problem of, again, looking at things that you shouldn't be looking at online. In my heart, I want to be a man of honor. So that means for me, having integrity in my private and public life. Well, I would never look at those things publicly, meaning upstairs at my, in my house or around other people. So why should I look at any of that privately, especially knowing that God is watching and God can see all those things? I want to be the kind of man that is meriting respect and honor from others and meriting respect from the Lord. And that means that I'm going to have to be a person that has integrity. I'm not wishy-washy. I'm not one way at church and then another way when I'm all by myself. And so this saying that I live with integrity in my private and public life 
is very motivating to me. It's very inspiring. And it, and it helps me in making decisions to say no to certain things or to say yes to certain things. The second half of that says I keep my commitments that I've made to God and others. Well, when it comes to integrity of my eyes, again, I've made a commitment to God that he would be Lord of my life, that I would follow him and do as he says. The Bible says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Well, I can't have integrity if I'm not doing that and I am lusting after other women. So I am using this phrase here to challenge me to be a man of honor, integrity, and somebody who keeps his commitments. You know, as a married man, again, I've made a commitment to my wife as well. She's the other half of that. So I've made a commitment to God and I've made a commitment to Sarah to live with integrity with my eyes. And do I, do I always do great at that? No. And I've, I haven't always done great with that, but I am aiming towards being more like Christ. And every time that I take this saying with me and I pray through this, I'm reminded and inspired to act that way when I'm faced with the problem of, oh crap, here's some stuff online that I don't want to see. I shouldn't be seeing. And it can be in public too. It doesn't matter. Wherever that temptation comes, I am now using this, this saying or this mantra, this phrase, I live with integrity in my private and public life and I keep the commitments I've made to God and others, it's there, it's repeatable, it's transferable, and it goes with me wherever I am, and it's making me you know, a better man. The, the next thing that we pray and say is, I'm a man of discipline. I do the hard right thing over the easy wrong thing every time. Again, this is super lofty, and I certainly do not do this perfectly. I don't even do this all the time, but man, I'm challenged by it. This really helps me when I don't want to do the hard right thing. And I'll give you an example. I don't always like getting up at 4.30 when I don't have to. In fact, many days that's a challenge for me. But I want to be a man of discipline. I want to be somebody who other people look at and could say, man, that's, he just sets a great example because he does hard right things. He goes and he asks for forgiveness. That's hard to do. But I want to be the guy that does that over the easy wrong thing, which is just avoiding it or sweeping it under the rug. I want to do that every time. I want to be a guy that gets up early, despite how I feel. I want to be a guy that goes and runs or exercises, despite what I feel like doing in my mind, right? My emotions aren't the leader. So my discipline should be. And the more I am challenged or tempted to not do those things, the more this saying is helping inspire me to do that thing, that courageous thing, which is to put your shoes on and get outside and go do something, right? And I'm always glad, by the way, that I did. And you are always going to be glad that you did the hard right thing as well. The third thing that we say is, I'm a man of strength. I'm spiritually, mentally, physically, relationally, and emotionally strong. And I use my strength to help serve others. So one of the challenges that we talk about in being a godly man is that we have to recognize that you weren't made strong mentally. Maybe some of you are very wise. Maybe some of you are very strong physically. Maybe some of you have just great faith and you're spiritually strong. You, you look at all of these different areas of strength and you say, why did God give that to you? Why are you strong in these areas that you're strong? Well, it certainly isn't just so that your life benefits. It's not how God's kingdom works. God is certainly in the business of being in a great relationship with you and he loves you and he takes care of you and he provides for you and he gives you these amazing gifts. But the reality is, and the example is from Christ, that God made men strong so that they can sacrifice and die to themselves for the benefit of others, for the benefit of Christ's kingdom. And so when we look at this, we say, gosh, I can physically take care of this. Do I want to go, you know, move somebody who's moving from church again, not always, but I'm physically able and God made me physically able. What a blessing to be able to walk and move and carry heavy things for somebody else so I can die to what I want to do on the weekend and go serve my neighbor. That's why God gave me that. So I should use that that way. Why did God give me the ability to be strong, maybe uh, relationally or emotionally or any of these things? It's so that I could use those strengths where somebody else needs a hand. That's the essence of manhood, is using that to die to yourself, to sacrifice what could just be your own and just hoard it for yourself and use it instead for God's glory and for the benefit and service of others. What an awesome 
phrase and saying and mantra this is to be strong in these areas, to remind myself that it wasn't just for me. It's not just for you. The fourth principle that we talk about is I'm a man of joy. I live my life to the fullest each and every day, and my happiness and attitude is not controlled by my circumstances or feelings. I don't know about you, but there's nothing worse than somebody who says he's a Christian and he's a total grump or a jerk, right? Like that guy is so annoying to me. And maybe I shouldn't be annoyed. <laughs> maybe I'm supposed to be better than that. But the reality is, it's a bad example. And it's certainly not somebody that I want to be like. The flip side of it is I know a few people, and there's not many, unfortunately, but I know a few guys that are just, man, they're just great guys. And they seem like, and I'm sure they have bad days, but man, they just seem like they choose joy. They choose to have a great attitude. They're happy people. And I'm inspired by those guys to think, man, I want to be like that. I want to come across like that. And so as I go through my day or as I go through different problems that, that I'm, I'm confronted with, I just think, you know what? I could have a bad attitude here or I can choose to live today to the fullest and not let my happiness be dictated by this circumstance. Like, I'll give you an example. I, I want to be a great dad, but the reality is I don't always like going to kids' events. I don't always like sitting in the bleachers. I don't always like taking eight hours of the day to be at an event or whatever it is. Selfishly, as a selfish guy, I don't always want to do that. I've got stuff that I would rather do. But rather than going and just, you know, moaning and whining about all of that and having it ruin my day, which I've done plenty of times because I'm a selfish dude, God is changing me slowly by having a saying like this in my heart that I'm going to choose to make today great. And you know, the older we get, the wiser hopefully we get. It's not, it doesn't just come because you get older, but hopefully we're getting wiser as we get older. And one of the things you come to find out is that people die and pass away. And a lot of times it's unexpectedly. And so where, you know, you might just complain about having to go sit at something that you didn't want to go do, and you were just being a selfish jerk for a while, you wouldn't feel that way if you knew you only had two days left, you might really just go, I, I'm going to make the most of today. I don't care where it is. As long as we're together, you know, I'm going to have a great day. Imagine if that was your attitude. Imagine if that's how you approached it. Well, this saying helps to inspire and direct us that way to, again, we're never going to get it right, but we're going to try to become the men that God meant for us to be. And part of that is just being a man of joy, choosing to have a great attitude, choosing each day to not let circumstances or feelings control how we feel, control how we act. And so those four principles of being a man of honor, a man of discipline, a man of strength, and a man of joy, each come with a saying or a motto that we can transfer and, and take with us where we go. But as we know, it's not, it's not about just saying a, a really positive remark. It's not like this name it, claim it kind of nonsense that's out there of just speak great things and it comes to you. God's laws are, are true and right and good. And there is certainly something about being positive and, and having phrases like this. But the reality is the power doesn't come from memorizing a specific saying. It comes from God changing our hearts. And that is a work of the Holy Spirit in us. And so as a Christian, we have the ultimate power, you know, at our fingertips. And that is God living and residing in us and us connecting with him, taking this and turning it into a prayer, turning it into worship, saying, God, I can't, I can't do these things. I can't be a man of honor every day. I can't, and I'm not a man of discipline every day. I'm not always a man of strength or joy, but I want to be. And I know you've made me in this way and you've given me all that I need in Christ to be a better man and to live a better life, to live a bigger life. And you have made me with great purpose and you've put me on a mission. Help me to be more like you in these ways. Help me to live with integrity. Help me to keep my commitments, all of this, right? So this is how I go through this prayer. This is how we encourage men to go through this prayer. And again, what we're finding out is that the problems that we face are not insurmountable. They're not always so complex that we just have no way through them. They're actually quite simple to understand. They're just very difficult to live out. So 
my hope in this conversation today is that you start to demystify some of the some of those ideas that again that you just have to stay, stay stuck that there's no way through these things that you're going to need a ton of counseling to get through it or something else really the reality is most of the problems we face we know the answer it's usually pretty simple the hard part is the doing the hard part is is acting on what we already know to do and taking these four sayings might help you like crazy and so that that's my hope for you today maybe as you listen to this you can write these down again you can go to getinthefight.club scroll down and you can find that free resource and you can get this print these off we tell everybody in our fight club to print it off put it in a few places i can see mine in front of me right now it's up here and and you can just download this into your heart every day pray this ask about ask god and invite god into the story to help you to become the man that god meant for you to be because remember you are exactly where you're at based on your ability to make decisions every day either good or bad it's led you exactly where you're at the beautiful part about god's story is that christ and you can make tomorrow better than today you can be better tomorrow through christ than you were today and, and where you end up five years from now five minutes from now five days from now can be so much better if you simply submit to him and connect with him and these sayings are just portable ways for us to remember to bring Christ into the problem so he can provide the solution. So that's our hope for you today. Understanding this can be life-changing, but it starts with you taking responsibility and demystifying the problems and solutions and just saying, okay, wait, I just need to go say I'm sorry. I just need to ask for forgiveness. I just need to get rid of my phone. I just need to do whatever it takes to be a better man and it's going to take courage and so we pray for courage we pray for strength and pray that you would be the man that god meant for you to be and maybe these sayings can help you today hey guys thanks so much for being here today and listening to the show please be sure to head over to the website at getinthefight.club and before you go if you haven't already please subscribe click the like button and leave us a positive five-star review It makes a huge difference whenever you do. Have a great day. Go get in the fight.